we've got the oxyhydrogen uh, generating apparatus here uh, and uh, the oxyhydrogen comes out this tube here this is a bubble tube so I can see the amount of gas bubbling out and also avoid as much as possible the uh, caustic solution getting down into the experimental apparatus so the, I see the bubbles coming up and by this stage it's a pure gas coming out and it comes down and in through this tap here and then I fill this tube here with water. This uh, wall thickness here is about half inch thick uh, to reduce the risk of uh, explosion and um, this, uh, the gas coming in displaces the water and pushes the water out this tube here which then goes through a U-loop and out drips out. Then when there's sufficient gas in there, I then uh, connect up the uh, electric spark system to a little uh, inlet at the back here at the top. Now I've got to make sure that there's no water droplets sitting in that inlet tube that stop the gas from getting to the spark. So uh, to do that I um, keep the gas flowing and turn off this outlet tube so gas is forced up into this tube here. When the oxyhydrogen explodes, uh, the exhaust, the pressure exhaust comes out this one-way relief valve, and then that valve closes when uh, it's about atmospheric pressure, and then uh, we've got, in theory, pure steam here. Now, down to he down here is a aluminium piston sitting on an O-ring. That O-ring stops the water that I fill up into this chamber from leaking out too quickly. Now this aluminium piston has a, a string attached to, to it underneath and when the uh, exhaust water vapour condenses it forms a semi-vacuum and it, the aluminium absorbs the heat of condensation and also this, these metal parts here would absorb some heat as well. So then when this uh, semi-vacuum occurs then there should be an implosion effect which raises this piston to some extent and pulls this string. And I'll be able to measure the amount of string that's being pulled in, and, but also we'll have the uh, recording of it, of the uh, movement of the piston in the video. I'm now going to fill the tube with water, so I'm going to turn on the tap for the uh, little U-tube here, and make sure the gas tap is off, and make sure the tap is off for the spark. So then I've got to lift the uh, valve so I can pass water through it. Up it comes, about halfway full, keep it coming, that's good, that's it. Now it's getting quite full now. Uh, and and now I can close the valve and uh, you can see the water coming out the U-tube there. Okay, now I'm ready to turn on the uh, power. Let's switch here, over here on the generator and turn the tube on. Okay, now we've got... Well, I'd better turn down the power a little bit on the uh, power supply. We're getting a little bit of gas coming up. We're getting a little bit of the uh, caustic fluid coming around the the, the uh, tube here. Okay, so you can see the uh, gas, oxyhydrogen gas bubbling up into the um, apparatus and you'll start to see the level of the water start to come down to a visible point. You can see it now coming down below the relief valve. Beautiful, it's nearly reached the bottom, the top of the piston and I think we're just about there now, we're starting to get gas bubbling out of there so let's close that and open that so any gas now is going through the, the spark and so now I turn off the oxyhydrogen generator and turn off the gas here okay so now we've only got the spark tap open so now I go around the corner and hit the spark and we'll see how we go. Yeah. 
letting go, finally. There we go. So you can see that the uh, piston has gone up a bit, probably went up a bit further, but dropped back. And uh, so you can see that um, the explosion of the gas was very quickly followed by an implosion of the steam which uh, lifted the fairly weighty piece of aluminium. So you can imagine that over a large surface area it could have quite a lot of uh, lift and quite a lot of thrust.